Hey everybody, welcome back to the Unland Place of Binding Isaac Gadget with Plus, where we stink. We're we're very stinky and bad at Isaac, apparently. Oh well. Life goes on. We're the forgotten. Like we're just gonna forget about those losses that we had. But first I'm gonna ergo. Get a little higher. Get the footrest in the proper position. Ooh, crank the standing desk a little bit and then recognize everything in is, is in the exact same position that it was just uh, slightly higher now. <laughs> Maybe I didn't really do too much. You genius. You genius. Not a fool. I was waiting to say you fool, but no, we made it. Um, People make fun of me all the time for worrying about uh, ergonomics. But like... Last week when I was deadlifting, I'm pretty sure I did something bad to my neck. And I like pinched a nerve. It's getting better. I'm not going to diagnose myself with a pinched nerve. All I'm going to say is I googled uh, my symptoms. People always say, you shouldn't do that. It'll get you worried. No, I mean, you should do that, in my opinion. Being worried is is sometimes productive. You know, if you have a stomach ache and you've had it for a few days and you Google your symptoms and Google says, well, you're going to die, you should go see a doctor. I, I recognize that, I don't know, I just think it's like a situation where you're trying to avoid the temporary pain of feeling worried about something over the perhaps more permanent pain of, you know, ignoring your symptoms and it leading to an actual health emergency, you know what I mean? Don't be afraid of being afraid. It's a great quote, the only thing to fear is fear itself. Hold on, I'm thinking. Um, just crack it. Look at that! Now you're thinking with portals. Um, but I googled my symptoms, and it was like, sounds like you got a pinched nerve. And I was like, I don't think so. And then I read some more about it, and I was like, oh yeah, you got me. <laughs> Apparently the, the predominant treatment is rest, though. So, hey, ergonomics are important, you know? Especially as you're getting older, or you're lifting some, you know, heavy weights. You don't want to put yourself out of commission for too long. There's no pride in... Sitting like a weirdo on a chair. I've done it myself. You put your knees on the chair and then, you know, drape your body over the back of it, but put the back at the front. It doesn't make you cool. The only thing that makes you cool is sitting like that in the toilet. Not the greatest two of spades. What is up? Is the game apologizing? Is that what's happening? For all of the terrible, uh... Pill rotations we've had on like, you know, probably 80% of our runs for the last decade. And I'm not making a joke about it being 2020. <laughs> I mean like literally for the previous 10 years. Look at that little teleportation. New tech. So we got a very good assortment of pills here. Anyway. My dad has a he has a pinch nerve that for like a decade was giving him a lot of trouble in his uh in his back and like hip area i've always been you know when when i was like 15 it was really funny as much as i am loath to admit it because you're like ah uh, my dad he's old he's got a pinched nerve probably never happened to me every day since i entered my 20s i've been like oh no for whom the bell tolls one day is gonna come for me too but anyway, I'm doing fine. It's Friday today. It's been, um... I mean, to be honest, I'm very... Great, good damage. Very productive damage there. I'm excited in a way that is gonna make people angry. I'm excited that the holiday season is kinda uh, coming to an end. I don't mean excited like, thank God the holidays are over. Oh, I had so much leisure time. So annoying. What I mean more is like, yikes, extreme yikes. What I mean is, it's nice to be on the holidays, but I'm also very much looking forward to the start of this year, which we're already in, obviously. Well, I guess I won't be hitting you then. I am a fool. 
Please just land more Explosivo shots. Apparently, he's decided not to shoot. Because <laughs> I think we got a good thing going on, on YouTube and Twitch right now. You know, we're doing new stuff. We're editing videos. It's, it's a foreign concept, but a good one nonetheless. We are going to take this mostly for deal with the devil uh, precedent right now. And the Spirit Heart is also nice. I think we should see if our shop's nearby as well. Ah, eh, whatever. We'll get it later. This run's looking solid right now. Let me hydrate here for a second. I'm eager to get a head start on the new year. You know, it's like when you decide that... It's so good. When you decide to get to work on a project... If it's something you're dreading... You dread the day that it's coming, you know? You're like, oh, it starts on Friday. It's Monday, three days till I'm gonna be, you know, in misery, blah, blah, blah. It weighs on your mind like crazy. But if you're motivated and excited for something, you're like, hey, come on, let's get down to it. I know it's, you know, Christmas morning, but can't we start uh, getting those TPS reports out? That's where I'm at right now. And to be fair, it is January 3rd, so I think, you know, most people probably have gone back to work if they're working gone back to school maybe on Monday is probably the day you go back to school but I'm eager to get going I feel like it's it's the most excited I've been for a new year in in at least occupationally in a while doing new stuff trying new things and uh, seems to be resonating with people so far I also feel like I've been out of the video editing game so long people are like Wow, it's amazing, like his... That hurt. That, what's wrong with me, dude? <laughs> They're like, his edits are pretty slick. What happened? I didn't expect him to edit this slickly. Well, can I tell you something in all honesty? It's not really me. It's that video editing software has come so far since the last time I was consistently editing any sort of content into the video. We're truly living in like... I didn't real. You might not realize it even if you're if you've only started edi editing videos recently. But we're living in a golden age of video editing software. I used to use Sony Vegas, and it was fine, but it had problems. Like like everything technological, you know, eight or nine years ago was just a little bit less refined than it is right now, um, for the most part, I suppose. And. Uh, the only difference is the the one that got worse was the coke vending machines but we've talked about that ad nauseum we don't need to go there but suffice it to say coca-cola corporation if you're listening to this please either make the coca-cola freestyle machines have like less lag when you press the button like replace it with a physical mechanism instead of the digital mechanism or alternatively go back to the old lever system dude there's a reason the mcdonald's is are still using those they're better for throughput very nice get here. Um, but yeah, like in terms of... It used to be like, at least in Sony Vegas, in 2012, if you wanted to make like a cool text effect, like text fly in from like the right side of the screen, you needed to have a degree in audiovisual like special effects, you know? It couldn't be a degree with honors because then you'd be working for Pixar or something. But you needed to at least have completed a, a six-week course. You'd get the text set up the way you wanted. You set up a keyframe or a series of keyframes. And then those keyframes, you start moving the text, you know, sideways to get the animation on it that you want to have. I believe you could save that stuff so you could reuse it. But I was always like, I'll never need this again. And then a week later, I was like, ah, come on. <laughs> Nowadays, like when I was editing, that was scary. When I was editing text in uh, Premiere Rush, which is just like the the Zoomer Adobe Premiere for people who want to edit but don't need like you know extreme functionality, which which I really don't. Um, the simplification is actually pretty nice. Uh, don't do it. <laughs> Come on. Honestly, I am gonna take it. I'm actually scared we could lose on this one, despite having some of the best items in the game. Um, how do I... Okay. What is the... Four? Dude, that's cool. That's a sick animation. Y'all did a great job with this one. Um, that's... That's sweet. 
And we can still melee as well. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, now you just, there's like a button that is a big text box and you click on it and it's like, oh, would you like a cool like BuzzFeed style uh, transition that flies text in from the right side of the screen and then dissolves it in two seconds? And I'm like, yeah, how did you know? That's exactly what I wanted. They're like, yeah, that's what everybody wants at all times. It's just the best way to do it. And uh, it, that's our Web 3.0 existence right now. Yeah, you, instead of, uh, you know, doing all that, bus you fool. Instead of doing all that bespoke stuff you had to do before, eh, just click this button. Type in your text, you're good to go. Adjust the parameters as you see fit. It's very nice. It's a nice situation, to be honest. I am no more talented. In fact, if anything, I'm probably less talented in, in many different aspects than I was, you know, 10 years ago. Particularly at Isaac, apparently. Um... But the, the tools have become so much better. And I think it's a very, it's a good democratization of entertainment, you know? No longer do you have to be a great editor to make great edited content. It's my dream come true. Careful. The lethal flatulence. Okay, we should really take a peek for a secret room. Because I'm... I don't know my HP. The curse is getting me good. Uh, if it's not here, then... We, oh, we know where the secret room is. It's all the way up there. I forgot we had the mind. I am a little worried about our HP. But if we could just get a little, we're gonna be fine. We're not in a terrible spot. Just play as smart. We should exit this floor, okay. But it's been fun to make, honestly. And I, I, I know I've talked, you're, you're probably sick of hearing me talk more about YouTube. You're like, talk about your life. Well, my life has been YouTube. I got a, I got a pinch nerve. And I, I've started jogging and eating less to, to cut down on my weight a little bit. How's it, how's it going? It's, it's going well. I've lost like 400 grams. It's only the third day of the new year, you know? Cut me some slack here. My legs hurt pretty badly, though, I will admit. Probably less than 400 grams, to be honest. But regardless. What was I talking about? <laughs> um, oh, just get me to the item room corridor, dude. YouTube is... I've been putting a lot more focus on, on YouTube. and You know, with Twitch, we did... The, you might say, what about Twitch? Well, we did that whole redesign on Twitch last year. That, that was a burst of enthusiasm. Apart from that, you know, Twitch has gotten a lot of attention. Team Unity Tuesday, you know, a year or two ago, was basically the launch of a brand new show. I don't know what else, like, Twitch is live content, so it's a little harder to think about what to do, you know? All Twitch streamers, they, they steal from each other in terms of what to do, because there's just not that much, like, variance, you know? Everybody has some variant of, like, a Subscriber Sunday show. Everybody has some variant of, you know, of everything, basically. It's hard to be innovative within that live entertainment space. But on YouTube, I wouldn't say I've been lazy, but I've been, like, just doing the same sort of routine for a long time. So it feels like there's, you know, lots of room to grow there. And I was thinking, you know, because I've been living in this, like, post-growth uh, existence on YouTube for a long time. And I want to be very clear. I am, like, super thankful for the audience I have. And, you know, if you're watching this video, I think we're part of... We have a unique content creator viewer relationship. There, I don't think there's too... There's probably some, but I don't think there's too many other communities on YouTube that would watch, you know, 3,500 episodes of, uh, you know, a, a, an individual playing the same game. Like, the game choice is what drives a lot of, a lot of, uh, viewership on YouTube, right? You know, a, a game coming out, uh, can, can make or break somebody's career. Hold on, we want this. Uh, oh, pheromones, hold on. We definitely do want to do this. 
It's still a great run here, even with the bizarreness of what's happening. And you might be saying, well, NL, the only reason I watch the Isaac videos is, you know, I don't care about Isaac anymore, but you're so consistently entertaining. It's true. Basically, at some point, a great deception occurred. You started watching the videos because you're like, I want to see what this guy does in Isaac. And then, you know, here you are five years later. <laughs> and you're like, tell me more about uh, the grocery store, Eggman. So, like, I'm extremely grateful and I recognize that I'm in, like, a, an incredibly unique position. And I've previously used that. I... Oh, you're an enemy. That makes sense. Um, I think I've had things mildly backwards. I've been like, hey, because I have that community, I don't have to, you know, do the stuff that you would have to do to, to grow an audience that other channels have to do, like, you know, editing or, you know, playing new games and blah, 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 blah. I think that's a bad attitude because I think the reason people like watching that content is because it's, it's varied, you know, it, and it's entertaining. We, we might as well. Let's get weird. So, I mean, that's basically where I'm coming down with it. You know, the editing and the Twitch highlights being actually, like, put in a compilation style and stuff like that. It, it doesn't exist to, like, and the Northern Lion tries stuff. It doesn't exist to, like, you know, clickbait a new audience. What it exists is, is as, like, you know, it's like a restaurant having a... That hurt. A restaurant having a coupon or something like that, you know? If you already go to the restaurant... Well, that was horrible. If you already go to the restaurant, you should be stoked. Hey, I got a coupon. I already love their falafel. Now I got, uh, you know, the opportunity to get the, the falafel a little bit cheaper. If you don't go to the restaurant... Maybe you'll try it out, because you saw that I had a Forza Eliminator win, which is just an unbelievable accomplishment, the likes of which the world has never seen before from me. <laughs> oh my god, we're still alive. Oh my god, he admitted. Anyway, that's where I'm at. I'm having fun editing, but everything in Isaac needs to be spun out into a 45-minute long diatribe, so that's why I'm belaboring the point, okay? Plus, I have to... It's freaking January, dude. Nothing's going on. What do you want? Another day of rain in Vancouver. That makes 35 in a row. There goes our, our newfound bone heart. You know? Like, what do you, what do you want me to say? It's freaking January, dude. It's January 3rd. Could you name a more boring day on the calendar? I think January 3rd is pretty high on the list. You're living in that post-holiday... Uh... Oh, come on, dude. This is... <laughs> I think this run is that unique combination of simultaneously uh, being harder than it looks, but also, like, I'm playing, like, garbage. I'm actually incredibly happy to be a uh, blue baby. Like, yes, the Ankh saved our... Come on. The Ankh saved our run, but on top of that, like... I'm very stoked to be Blue Baby because I think it simplifies our equation. We can move around. You know, like, I don't even have to, like, be here. I could just leave. We don't have to go through this song and dance. So that's what's going on in my life. <laughs> You pretty much got it. This and then being stoked that the Vancouver Canucks have won six games in a row. It's a, you know what? Tell you what, why don't we just do this, okay? Quick little check. And uh, I don't really want to fight enemies that disappear. I don't really want to fight enemies with invincibility. We're going to die. We're going to die with Epic Fetus as the Forgotten. How could this happen to me? I've made my mistakes. Got nowhere to run. Life goes on as I'm fading away. Nah, nah, nah. Not this time. We're, we're bringing it back. This is our this is our Ghosts of Christmas past moment from Ebenezer Scrooge. Or Ghosts of Christmas uh, to come, I suppose, in this case. To, to make the metaphor more correct and Dickensian. Um, 
we just had a, a flash forward to the comments, what the comments would have said about us losing. And I said, I don't want people to see us that way. So instead, we're just going to get the dub here. But I also think, like, the cool thing about making these edited videos is that I've, I've definitely, at times in my life, had that kind of, like, idea that coolness means being detached from something, you know? And I've worked hard as an adult to get out of it, because that was, like, you know... Growing up in the 90s and 2000s, what was the coolest word in the English language? <laughs> Whatever. Closely followed by, meh. We're okay. That's that's a room you expect to get hit on now and then. Hey, do you love your mom? Eh. How about your dad? Whatever. Oh my god, it's the coolest, it's the highest concentrated dose of coolness I've ever seen. <laughs> I feel like the the aesthetic these days is way more about being, you know, coolness means being passionate to some extent. You know, coolness means, you know, being open and accepting and loving. It wasn't really the way that uh, the culture was set up when I was a kid. So I think, you know, the idea that is like, yeah, I could put in some more work to make some edited content on YouTube, but eh. Now I'm realizing, having made some editing videos, or some edited videos, that, uh, you know, enthusiasm is cool. And enthusiasm is contagious, you know? These videos, people can tell I'm having fun making them. And they're made with the purpose of entertainment. So I think they, you know, they're buying into the, to the rebuild. It's a positive thing. Thanks for being around for it, I appreciate it. Trying to maintain this level of energy, you know, a burst of energy is great, but, you know, I learned in 20, uh, 2019 from working out. You only maintain that little burst of inspiration for, for so long, you know? The, after that, it's all about habit and commitment. So big ups to... Can I actually give a, a little toast to my own laziness? Probably like a year ago, I added Adobe Premiere to my Creative Cloud subscription uh, because Kate needed it to edit some videos while we were out of the country. Forgot that I had it. <laughs> and uh, as a result of that laziness, it's made the transition very seamless. What happens if you do this? Nothing special. I don't want Dunce Cap on this. We don't really want that either. This one's still a little spiced, but I believe in our ability to. And that's what, I, I think it was the last episode, maybe two episodes, episodes ago, I was going to talk about New Year's resolutions. I always find it annoying when people think they're better than New Year's resolutions. Because any opportunity to improve yourself, I think is a very responsible and adult thing to do. You know, yeah, here's the thing, a lot of New Year's resolutions people don't stick to. I knew we were going to get tagged on that one. But at least it shows, you know, a desire to improve. I think that's a that's the big deal, you know? If you go into New Year's or the New Year and you don't have any re resolutions because you're perfect, first off, uh, I don't believe you. But secondly, okay, fair enough. But if you go in and you're like, ah, there's no point in making a New Year's resolution because I'm not going to stick to it anyway, that's like... That's very sad to me. Much sadder than the person who wants to lose weight and gives up in February is the person who says it's not even worth trying. Because that person has given up on trying to become a better version of themselves. At least temporarily. So I, I admire anybody who's going in hard with those New Year's resolutions this year. Get it. I'm, I'm rooting for you. I don't have anything else to say. We, we hit 22 minutes. I'm out. <laughs> there's no... I guess, what you know, we're, was we're trying to wrap it up here. I'm just saying there's no shame in admitting, you know, there's areas of your life you could improve. Don't take the internet image board approach of, like, you know... Admitting weakness is a form of, uh, you know, is something you should be ashamed of. No, Poe Buddy's nerfing, dude. This would be... A very 
very nice room to have full HP after, or 2 HP. He's done. We should live. I mean, there, there's uh, two parts to me here. We should live, but we deserve to lose, but we're gonna win, probably. Has there ever been an Isaac run as simultaneously, like, deserved and undeserved as this one? <laughs> we deserve to lose in many opportunities, but also, like, once we became Blue Baby, we really held it together. Mind you, we're also using Epic Fetus, so I'm not trying to toot my own horn too much, but anyway. Whatever. We won. Little spooky. For now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. That was a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I will see you next time. See ya!